I'm not on the time, like up on the times, okay? So you haven't seen Cocaine Bear yet. That's what you're telling me. No. It's so good. Dude. I haven't. I haven't even seen the second Sonic movie. I think there's two. I haven't seen the first one, but Sonic is oh, the okay. Well, there we're on the same page. We're- yeah. <laughs> Plug for Cocaine Bear. It's so good. If you like like weird, gory, bizarre movies. Also, I love Ray Liotta. So had to go see what? Ray Liotta from Goodfellas is in that oh movie. It's like one of his best movies. Baby Yoda. Baby like, Yoda. Why is Baby Yoda in this? <laughs> Cocaine Bear. <ain't> baby Yoda. <laughs> it's All super, right. Like it's super gore. It's very gory. It's way. More I gory. might have to watch that when it if comes you, out. Yeah, March thirteenth. I think it comes out. You can stream it at home. This is a commercial for Cocaine Bear. We're doing co- commercials for it on Too Thick and Reckless, and now I thought you were. I thought you were saying like I could do it illegally, stream it through my home, and I was like, no, no, no. You can. I this, don't want to be a crime. This was a true crime podcast. We're not advocating for crime here. But I don't um, want to be an episode on this podcast. Okay. <laughs> no, it's you can stream it at home, like through I think Paramount or Amazon. Or whatever. Okay, I'll do that. I'm gonna put it on my to do list. I'm maybe I'll, maybe I'll watch it on our way to Mint. Oh, ooh, maybe we can get we can go out and watch it. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I tell you, I love it. top ten favorite movie. It was so good. <laughs> it was so stupid. All Only right, we can now, go watch Dirty Dancing. Dirty Dancing is one of my favorite movies. I, too. That is my all time. Like that's. I felt all so right. bad about you that. are getting off topic. I am. We okay. literally just talked about this before this episode. I'm gonna crop everything out except for cocaine. No, you will not crop this out. Okay, you, you'll keep it. And we'll then keep it. Whatever. Maybe people can tell us what their favorite movies are. We'll yeah, what's your favorite more, movies, people? A little more lighthearted than that was kind of a kind of a rush, a little harsh, don't you think? Yeah. What's your favorite movie, peeps? What's your favorite? Tell us. We want to know. All right. You can put little peeps everywhere now. Yes. On, the, on this one. So I know. genius. Today you're brilliant. Anyways, you. today's a Sarah show. Sarah's bringing us a case. It's a little late. I know. That. Thank I know you, you told I you told me who you're doing and I already forgot. So I'm gonna t- toss it over to you. And you okay, I'm gonna it. catch it. Let's go. Alrighty. <laughs> oh, it's this way. Oh shoot! <laughs> My camera's backwards. <laughs> All right, this go ahead. This is the best intro so for long. any episode, by the way. Like ten minutes in, we haven't even talked about the case yet. We we will get there <laughs> someday. <laughs> but okay. Let's do it. Okay. Let's go. Are you ready? I think so. Are you ready to listen? Always. I'm going to laugh. Okay. Um, (laughs) So here we go. The son of John Belcher and Cheryl Shepard, Jovan Belcher, grew up in Long Island, New York, where he attended West Babylon High School. My friend calls it Strong Island. West Babylon, New York. (laughs) Belcher <laughs> wrestled and played football for the high school and was an All-American as a wrestler and a football player. This is really crazy to me. He played linebacker, offensive tackle, nose guard, and fullback. Was it a small school where, like, they didn't have a it lot of It was, players? but, like, to be able to play all those positions, that's crazy. So, so I grew up in a really small town when there was, like, 300 people, and everybody played, like, multiple positions just because they didn't have enough guys to fill the roster. Just to keep switching them around. <laughs> they had to. So. <laughs> I understand, but it's just, like, if you think about it now, today. They have, like, 22 guys on the team. That's it. So everybody has to play every. No. <laughs> They were all dead by the end of the game. They're like, why don't we ever win? I'm like, because everyone's exhausted. (laughs) Yeah, by the second quarter. (laughs) They just stay out there. They don't move. They They just stay out there. Offense offense runs in. Like, no, we just stay. Defense. We're offensive line and defensive lines and special teams. Why are we seeing the same people 50 times? (laughs) No, but I think it's it's cool, though, because if you become like a jack of all trade, like you can just be like, Hey, so and so's hurt. You know, I need you to go play, and it's like they can do it. Yeah. You know, nowadays, I mean, you see like a wide receiver, running back kind of change. Um, and sometimes a a tight end, yeah, will intertwine with that because it's a flex position that they can do that. Yeah, but 
these are like linemen positions. I know. To, I Wild. mean, no. First off, no. Well, actually, I was a right guard, so I can't really say no. I didn't but, know you played football. Yeah. I didn't know that. Like, you've never told me that before. Oh. That's awesome. Yeah. It's probably why I'm all screwed up in my back. That's what happened to your back. What and I played soccer, ball? too. For, That's like, like, 10 years, 15 years. That's awesome. Yeah. Anyways, getting distracted again. I'm sorry. I just, I'm, I'm wildly impressed that you played football. So I'm sorry. I was just like, that was like, you threw that out there. Something oh, I didn't know yeah. about you. And now I, and now I know. Left and right. That's what I was. That's awesome. You're always right, baby. Oh, okay. Sorry. I'm done. Anyways, so he was the youngest of three sisters, which I think is kind of, kind of cool. You know, the baby, but his mom was the only one that raised the four of them, which was kind of interesting to me because the dad was there, but they don't really talk about him at a certain point in his life. Like they just, he was there and then he wasn't. So there's speculation that he passed when um, Belcher was younger, but there's not really much to go on with that. Um, but his mother was such a hard worker her work ethic and determination is what eventually lit the fire in Belcher to be something in his, you know, in the world. And I thought that was really cool because being a, being a man and I mean, either you're a mama's boy or you're not, you know, kind of thing. So we love a strong female role model. Dang right. Let's go. I, I think that's Let's us. Go mama Belcher. Don't tell our husbands. <laughs> Actually our husbands know. Don't worry. Yeah, um, <laughs> So, for the first time in team history for this high school, which is really cool, Belcher led his high school to an undefeated season. Wow. And even to the, which this is weird, the county championship game. It's like a county, not the state. We're not cool enough to be the state. We just have to. So, they do county, and then it's like all the counties go together to go to state. I didn't know that. See, here it's just state, it's not by county. Oh, that's how it is. It's like, well, yeah, but like. So, uh, depending on where you're at, like the Midwest, they do a lot of county stuff. That's crazy. Maybe because it's just so sprouse. Like, yeah, it's very country, you know. Lots of, yeah, makes sense. Makes sense. Not enough schools to do divisions, but enough schools in a county. Yeah. Okay. That makes sense now. Well, I think about it. Apparently, I don't think a lot. <laughs> but they would sadly, hey, I saw that. Don't shrug for you. Don't shrug me. <laughs> Sorry. I think, okay. But sadly, they would lose um, the Aww, game. But the problem. milestone has forever been ingrained in that school, even to today. And after that, that was his senior year. And so they retired his number right after his senior year. Wow. That's how big of a deal this was. And I, you know, you hear about retiring a number at a college level or an NFL level when someone passes. But to do it right then is just crazy. And I thought that was really cool. And he was a very smart. So academically, he excelled. And um, he was also very good at the field, obviously, because he played 7,000 positions. <laughs> but he wasn't recruited by some of the bigger colleges. Um, he kind of smaller school went kind of under the radar, but he eventually decided to attend the University of Maine, which is a Division One FCS school, which is a smaller school. Right. But he and that made him he became a black bear. That's what they were in the 2005 season. So this wasn't too long ago, um, and it's weird because now you see the University of Maine. Na like big names coming out of the University of Maine. And it's just, I, I love when you see a small school produce a big player. I think that just shows that the, that person has what it, you know, what they need and what you need. There was a player that I went to school with at Western Oregon. Um, it's actually a lot of reasons why I fell in love with the Giants, um, other than LT himself. But like anyways, Kevin Boss played for Western Oregon and I went to school with him and he played for the Giants. And I thought that was the coolest thing just to come from a, such a small school and go to such a 
big, big field. So um, a little side note. But for the first two seasons at the University of Maine, Belcher played outside linebacker and recorded 110 tackles between the two years. In 2007, the Black Bears decided to move Belcher to defensive end, where he excelled at that position as well. Belcher, by the end of the season, would have sacked total rating of 7th in the nation. Damn. Yeah, I thought that was crazy. 7th in the nation. He's in a small little school. And he's just pummeling people. These big schools are like, damn, we missed that guy. Yep. Missed him by a lot because we are dumb. Yes, I'm so dumb. <laughs> Belcher, you could say, put the University of Maine on the map of competitors. Having been awarded with Defensive Player of the Year, second team All-American, but the biggest achievement being a first team All-American in the football championship subdivision, a grouping of smaller schools in the NCAA Division I. So, I mean, those are some huge achievements. Very impressive, yeah. Um, he was the fourth multiple time all all American in Black Bear history, following John Hurd, Aaron Deshe I think it's Deshiel, and Stephen Cooper. Three huge names that later on, like later on, went on to like be some big players in the NFL. And like I think John Hurd's son is just now getting is either his son or his grandson. I think it's his son is now getting into um, football. It has to be his son, right? Yeah, because it's 2005. It would only be... Yeah, it has to be his son. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it's his son. But Belcher would go on to graduate from Maine, which is also something we don't usually hear about or read about because most of the time they get drafted before they yeah. can complete school. Right. Um, but he did. He completed school at the University of Maine with a degree in child development and family relations. Oh, that's sweet. Isn't that the coolest? I mean, he loved his family. His family oh. was his pride and joy. I love that. Also, it is cool that he graduated. I think they, like, pull these guys out of college, which, it, you know, I'm going to go on a tangent here real quick. It sucks because they're playing a sport that destroys their body, and, and then they grad, you know, they're at the end, they don't have a degree. They have no, What if they get injured their first year? Okay, yeah. we're done. Go ahead. No, I totally agree, 110%. <laughs> and I don't think maturity-wise they're ready for it. I think that, that, you know, not saying a degree makes you mature, but I think Age does, grow. though. Yep. Age does. Yep. So then I totally agree with you there. your brain's smooth until you're, like, 23 or something, you, you know. You're, you're just not – you can't make good <laughs> his, So his 10th grade <laughs> biology teacher and his high school football coach, so that's who, you know, he knew very close – he was very close with him. Stated that Belcher always did his work and sat right up front. So he's one of those students, you know. Mm -hmm. Following graduating from Maine, he won an academic momentum award from the NCAS Scholar Baller Program, which is kind of interesting to get a scholarship, like money after school. But he did. And I think, and, it, and he helped his mom, who was a single mom, and helped raise all of them and that's what he did with that money and i thought that was just sounds amazing. like just stand up guy just an all american boy prior to the 2009 nfl draft belcher was considered one of the best small school prospects and was expected to move to outside linebacker in the nfl but sadly belcher would go undrafted which was shocking to me that's crazy but as a free agent, Belcher signed a contract with the Chiefs in 2009. Being only 228 pounds, Belcher was considered small for an inside linebacker. It's, it's very small. It's very – well, you see those men now? They're like Huge. freight trains. Yeah. Mm -mm. But still, he made three starts as a rookie for that position – and he played in all of the team's games, just in other positions. Well, the Chiefs to go on to end their season with a record of 4-12, and 12, which was kind of bad, and would be last in the AFC West division. Oh, my goodness. That's the Chiefs not good. Would then I remember when they were, like, terrible, actually. Well, and you don't think of it now. Like, look at who just won the Super Bowl. Right. You no, know? I like I forgot. Like, because they've been good for, you know, a minute now. A while. So, yeah. A minute. 
The next season, Belcher became a regular starter, registering 53 tackles and 31 assists, and the Chiefs would go on to finish with a 10-6 record. The Chiefs would reach the playoffs, but would lose to the Ravens in the wild card round. Damn Ravens. For the... For the 2011 season, Belcher continued as a starter for the Chiefs, but they would once again fall last in their division. The Chiefs would re-sign Belcher in March of 2012 to a one-year contract worth $1.9 million. During the 2012 season, Belcher played in all 11 games and started in 10 of them before disaster struck mid-season. He had 33 tackles and five assists as the Chiefs started the 2012 season with a 1-10 record, and that would be the last record that Belcher would see or be known for. Belcher has always been looked at as a good man and a family man. Belcher in 2011 started volunteering in the community in Kansas City, having visited a nearby military base in a local elementary school to, to promote an NFL program for children. I think it's the one that you see now, the now 60 or the whatever that was. It was the oh, beginning yeah. oh, stages okay. of that. Okay. I didn't realize that. It, I mean, there was a smaller one before, and I can't remember the name of it, and I couldn't find it, but I remember there being a smaller program that they then threw into this um, now 60, I think is what it's called. Right. Belcher would make the trip back to his, back to Maine, or, well, I guess back to um, New York and Maine every year and give motivational speeches to the football team. Oh, Right? I really well, like him. I do, too. It gets bad, though. I, I know it's going to get... I hate it when... You do this every <laughs> week. Every week that you do one, you're like, you're like, oh, good, 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 good. And... and and you know, bam. I'm like, oh, it's so good. This is such a great but, like, story. And then you're like, like, and now I'm going to crush you. Yeah, I'm going to. But he's like the epitome of like, per not perfect. That's not the right word. But like, it's just like, that's what you want to hear in a football player. Yeah. You know, not doing drugs, not doing other things that we know of. Never was caught doing it. No record of it. But so. Like everything was good. Yeah. It was just and like he Rico. loved his mom and loved his sister and his yeah, family. Yeah, just like, like Rico. On. He was, uh, when you did him, the Globetrotter kid, like, he seemed like a nice guy. He struggled with, like, a little depression, but he was, like, really into his family. Yeah. And, and you know, I'm like, everything's, like, going good. And then It's now, going good still. It's still going good, okay? Now you're going to bring the, the dad stuff. <laughs> Belcher was introduced to a woman by the name of Cassandra Perkins. That's Perkins is the cousin of running back Jamal Charles' wife who was also involved in community work and was part of the women's organization for the Kansas City Chiefs. Aww. So they all kind of were connected. That's You know, I had a friend whose brother was on the Detroit Lions, mm -hmm. and I met them, you know, I became friends with them and his wife, and she was, like, in the – there's, like, a lot of, like, wives yep. of, like, NFL players that, like – are involved in community and they do stuff and they they're really engaged and I, I think, think it's, it's awesome it's super cool that yeah. they do that so he is in so he's involved he's, she's involved so they're they're just good people they're okay. good people maybe oh no Sarah. all right <laughs> Lay Belcher, down, man. I'm ready Belcher and Perkins hit it off and soon they were expecting a little girl Aww. By late 2012, She's Belcher was living with Perkins and their three-month-old baby, Zoe, in Kansas City. But the butterflies and rainbows would soon disappear when multiple friends and family members stated that the couple would only argue and fight. The fire between them seemed to have gone out, and a darker cloud loomed over the couple. Friends and family stated that the relationship was more than toxic, and Belcher's side piece slash girlfriend released text messages between Belcher and her showing that Belcher knew that if he left his baby mama, as he put it, she would take all of his money and their baby. Belcher made threats of quote unquote shooting Perkins if she didn't leave him alone, end quote. Belcher was so exhausted by the mental abuse he sustained from Perkins that he asked his mother 
to come live with them from New York to help with Zoe so that they could work on their relationship. This so couple he was, was being in, abused by the like girlfriend. Is that what he was saying? being abused? Yeah, by well, the, his baby mama. Oh, so the what? So the okay. So he wanted. So he he talked to his girlfriend in text messages where he was saying he wanted to shoot the mother of his child. Right. And then he asked his mom to come stay with them so he could work things out with her. Correct to work things out with Perkins, and so. They were going through couples counseling. They were trying to rekindle things. Oh, he broke up to... with the girlfriend. He's still with the girlfriend. Oh, he's with the girlfriend and it's, he's trying to work on his marriage? Yeah, she she never really was given a name. I did find an article later on. Like, I think today I read another article that released her name, but I forgot to put it in here. Um, but most articles just put her as the side piece, Ooh. his mistress. I hate that. It sounds so, so. sexist. Yeah, so so the mom did move. So the mom's living with them now. She's helping with Zoe. And the arguing between Perkins and Belchers only got worse as the days went on, especially, this is the part that gets sad, the night of November 30th, 2012. On the night of November 30th, 2012, Perkins had gone to a concert at the Midland Theater and returned at 1.30 a.m. And the couple fought, but no one but no one can actually say if they saw each other face-to-face -face and argued or if it was over the phone. There's no, there's nothing that, that they can pinpoint no, on. No, no confirmation mm -mm. how the argument went down. Okay. But after the argument, Perkins left the home, so she did make it home. It just doesn't know where this argument occurred. Like on the way home or when she right. was there. Or okay. if he was home and it happened there. Mm. But she headed to the Power and Light District in downtown Kansas City, an entertainment area. You can make the assumption that the conversation was done over the phone as Belcher was also in the Power and Light District. With she was looking girlfriend. for him, right? So, possibility. The exact location of where the argument was has yet to be fully exposed, so we can only assume that it was over the phone, but it could have easily been in person if Belcher left after Perkins did and met his girlfriend in the same area. But we will never know the truth. After being in the district for a while, Belcher took his girlfriend home and kissed her goodnight. The girlfriend said that he went to his car where apparently Belcher fell asleep behind the wheel, just parked in her apartment complex. A concerned neighbor in the apartment complex called 911 <laughs> about a suspicious person just like in, a a car in a car just that's chilling. running, oh. and he's asleep. And so the police arrived at the complex at 2.50 a.m. and woke up Belcher. Uh, he was still in the car where they talked to him about his reasonings for being there and why he was sleeping in his Bentley. Belcher told the police that he was waiting for his girlfriend and that he forgot her code to get in. The officers didn't smell alcohol. This is key. Didn't smell any alcohol in his breath, but asked him to go back inside for the night to stop scaring the neighbors. Makes sense. Yeah. But it's interesting because the girlfriend says that she saw him walk over there and he's stating that he didn't. He's waiting for her. I'm sure he was just telling the police something so they wouldn't be like. Correct. I'm sure he didn't want to be like, I don't want to go home because I. Right. Because crazy's at home. Well, I mean, in fairness, he's cheating on her. So. And, you know, honestly, like when, when you hear something like that, he, I can guarantee you he's probably drunk. He doesn't want to drive. And maybe he's trying to be responsible. Which is fine. It's But. But, so you he, know, like, he, I, I hate that the, I mean, I don't know how, I, I, I don't, for whatever reason, I don't know how this ends, but I hate that the white, the mother of this child gets painted as, like, crazy when he's out, like, cheating while they're supposed to be working on their relationship. That's, that's super messed up. You wait. I, I feel like I know what's going to happen. girlfriend. <laughs> uh, but, so, the Belcher tried to call his girlfriend, mistress, side piece, whatever you want to call her. But oh she God. didn't discover the missed calls until the next morning and didn't hear Belcher knocking on the door. 
Two women who were up late invited Belcher to wait inside their apartment after he explained the situation he was in. The neighbors stated that Belcher appeared to be intoxicated, but seemed to be in good spirits laughing and joking. The neighbors would then take Belcher to a local gas station to get a sports drink and made a spot for him to sleep on the couch for a couple hours. So they just bring a strange man, strange 230-pound man into their house and like, yeah, sure, you could sleep here. This is 2012. This like, is people in, like, know better. You this is in 1901. Okay. I watch too much true crime to let some man I, yeah. into my house. And he's sleep. drunk. So a drunk man. Yeah. Into my house. Anyways, that can easily overpower you. He's a lineman. Yeah. Please. I mean, a small lineman, but 230 pounds is significantly he can bigger still, than me. He can still pummel you through a wall. I'm so. saying he's a professional athlete and you're just, yep. I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't. I wouldn't either. No, you can sit outside and wait. No. Belcher no. would leave Bye. the apartment at 645. So he could make it to a team meeting planned for later that morning. But Belcher wouldn't make it to that team meeting and Zoe would become parentless. Oh no. When oh, Belcher sorry. arrived back to the house, he shared with Perkins on December 1st, 2012, he was greeted by an angry Perkins. Uh -huh. Perkins knew how to push Belcher's Belcher's. I said I sound something in my head sounded something different i don't know belchers buttons and to set him off they both began to argue about going out to a club or partying said belcher's mother who had only been living with them for two weeks at that point when belcher's mother heard multiple gunshots she ran to the bedroom and saw her son kneeling next to perkinson's body saying he was sorry oh perkins had been shot nine times in the neck, the chest, the abdomen, the hip, the back, the leg, and the hand. Holy. This, this wasn't accidental. No, he unloaded that gun on her. Yeah. Belcher's mother called 911 as Belcher himself gave his daughter Zoe a kiss and his mother a kiss and said he was sorry for everything and left. The 911 dispatcher could hear a baby crying in the background and Belcher's mother hysterical, but the nightmare did not end there. After murdering Perkins, Belcher drove roughly five miles to the parking lot of the Chief's practice facility. Belcher stepped out of the car with a gun pointed to his head when he encountered Chief's GM, Scott Pioli. Belcher told Pioli that he had just murdered his girlfriend and thanked him for, before asking for Pioli and Chief's owner, Clark Hunt, to take care of his daughter. Belcher asked Pioli that he wanted to talk with the Chief's coach, Romeo Crennel, and defensive coordinator, Gary Gibbs. When Crennel arrived, Belcher said, quote-unquote, You know that I've been having some major problems at home and with my girlfriend. I need help. I wasn't able to get enough help. I appreciate everything you all have done for me with trying to help, but it wasn't enough. I have hurt my girl already and I can't go back now. The chief staff pleaded with Belcher to put down the, his gun, but he would only lower it to load around. Cornell told Belcher that he was taking the easy way out. As the sirens in the distance got closer and closer, Belcher felt like his time was only getting less and less. Belcher knelt behind a vehicle saying, quote unquote, guys, I have to do this. I got to go. Can't be here and take care of my daughter. Belcher made the sign of the cross on his chest and fired a bullet into his head. Oh Cornell said Belcher had blamed Perkins for missing a team meeting a few weeks prior saying he had to watch the baby after Perkins didn't come home the night before. Perkins had a spending problem, and the couple had trust issues that may have influenced the actions by Belcher, but was there possibly a bigger issue at hand than what was in, what, that was not you know talked about? Well, on January 14th, 2013, so about a month and a half later, Belcher's autopsy came back, showing that his blood alcohol levels were 
0.17 more than double the legal driving limit in Missouri. Also marked on medical reports that were later released, Belcher suffered from CTE at the time of his death. Could this have triggered the thoughts and behaviors that made no sense to those close to Belcher? Was CTE to blame for the death of both Perkins and Belcher? In December of 2013, so we're going 11 months later, almost a year, so at the year of the murder-suicide, Belcher's family had his body exhumed and requested that a special test to see if CTE was indeed present. On December 31st, 2013, Belcher's mother filed a wrongful death lawsuit in Missouri State against the Chiefs. The lawsuit claimed that in the moments leading up to the death, the Chiefs were aware of the symptoms and signs of cognitive and neuropsychiatric impairment. Belcher had been micromanaged virtually every aspect of his life when it came to his physical abilities to perform in the workplace, including analyzing diet, speed, strength, and body mass index, but yet when it came to monitoring his mental health and neurological capacities, the chiefs disregarded evidence of impairments and fostered an environment where Belcher was required to play through injuries and became exposed to further neurological harm. On September 29, 2014, almost two years after the murder-suicide, a medical examiner would indeed determine that Belcher had CTE. Belcher did have CTE. Belcher's daughter and mother together would be eligible for up to $4 million under the proposed concussion settlement between the NFL and former players. Furthermore, the lawyers representing Belcher's daughter had also filed a wrongful death lawsuit. They look almost identical um, from his mother's. Mm -hmm. Among, Among the allegations contained in the lawsuit is that Belcher was knocked unconscious during a game against the Jags in 2009 and did not receive adequate treatment. The lawsuit also refers to a November 2012 game, which would have been right before this happened against the Cincinnati Bengals when the lawsuits allege Belcher suffered what should have been recognized as an acute concussion. But he goes on and plays. So the lawsuit also <clears throat> claims that Belcher exhibited signs of CTE, including change in his mood and his behavior. So the Chiefs had an idea about all of this. And I know CTE is becoming more and more um, a thing nowadays. They're discussing it. Well, I mean, it's always been a thing, but now they're talking about it. Correct. More players are coming up, you know, saying that they have it. Um, a lot more players are actually dying from it. A lot more players have committed crimes because of it, um, because it just changes who they are completely. And I, you know, as bad as it sounds, I, I can't sit here and say that it wasn't CTE, especially with the way he was growing up and the way he um, felt about everybody. Like you know how- what makes me so mad is that, like, they're like, oh, she, Perkins had a spending problem. She was out. Maybe, like, she was dealing with somebody who had issues, and right. it was too much for her, you know? And, and now, and- like, she gets kind of painted in not a great light, like, that she's crazy or whatever. Like, dealing with someone who is it has something like that, he could have been very unhinged. You don't know. Well, and that's know. the thing. The hot and coldness of a person like that, like, you can't. You know, I, I agree with you a whole lot. There's not a whole lot about Perkins, um, which I think is, you know, kind of sad because it kind of makes it paints a one-sided story. But at the same time, when you hear about what he was going through too, you know, mentally. Um, I mean, he was a victim of his circumstances as much as she was. But I'm saying, like. I know. I just I don't have any patience for this like blaming victim blaming like she got instantly shot nine times. victim blaming and yeah so it was interesting I found that um the so you know obviously Zoe you know in my mind obviously would go to grandma because the next of kin yeah 
grandma lost that right. And that kind of threw a red flag for me too. Because she was painted as like a, you know. Kind person. Right. And I guess it, and and I guess it shouldn't really, when I first read it, it threw a red flag. But when I read deeply, I actually read the whole court case that she filed, which there's still not an answer on it. Um, I think that they have kind of just, they settled one of them. Um, like Zoe will be getting so much money, X amount of money. I think it's like 30 million. Um, and that's a lot. <laughs> yeah. And because between like his pensions, his, um, the rest they paid her, you know, the rest of his contract and stuff like that directly. But they actually in July of 2014 granted wh who she's now nine months old. Zoe is, um, to her cousin, Sophie Perkins, which is the mom's sister. That makes yeah. sense to me because if you're okay, so if your what sister was murdered yep. by her partner, do you want his family having the I baby? Know. I totally agree, a hundred percent. And I guess you know, obviously, she was granted emergency custody. Well, because she was given the, the situation, house. yeah. Um, but she fought for full custody and was not granted it saying that she's not um, suited. Well, I mean, she's probably older. And yep. here is, like, the sister of the victim who yep. is probably more, you know, I don't know the sister's circumstances, but maybe she's, you know, got a husband and kids of her own. She's just more, kid. she's just more uh, stable, I think. Yeah. You know? Well, it's not that the mom maybe isn't necessarily unstable. It's just, you know, her son is the one who murdered him yeah. mother and himself. So I get it. Like, if, if you know, if, if, Jeremy decided to go crazy and kill me. I, I, I could see my family being like, "Well, we don't want the kids to be with his family. We, you know, he killed her." <laughs> yep. I, I just, I, I can see that, and I, you know, I'm glad I that eyes with it. It's completely. It's I think terrible, that both sides whole... are victims of this. Well, yeah. I mean, greatly. it's not his fault. You yeah, know, like think about the mom, um, like, family your son, wise. Yeah, your son kills your grandchild's mother right in front of you that's you know that's the other thing maybe she wasn't suited because she had ptsd from all oh i would not be surprised oh my goodness this i mean is... it, it just it, it's kind of like a you know it's a snowball it just goes downhill and it just gets bigger and bigger and it just affects more and more people and yeah. you know well this I just is think... a wild case sarah <laughs> and i dumbed it down a lot <laughs> I just it's it's that was intense and I was like it's you know it's so sad when everything seems like it's just like they have all of this going for them and then something bad happens I am bummed out especially <sighs> this TE you know yeah. maybe something that he couldn't stop I have to go watch Cocaine Bear again now to perk myself up oh my god <laughs> well thank you everyone for joining us <laughs> on that note I uh I'm sorry uh, this was sort of like, and I always feel bad when they're like sad episodes. All of mine are sad. I know, but they're like, we're doing a true, you know, a true crime podcast. So that happens. But I hope you at least enjoyed learning about this case and a little bit more about CTE. And if you have been enjoying our content, please feel free to like, follow, and subscribe. Bye. Central time. Bye. No, Eastern. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Kitty, me gusta, 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 me